So it was my first time at CES this year and it was awesome. I got to see so much cool tech, so many cool gadgets, and it seems like the entire thing was all about AI, which you know made me happy. Nvidia invited me there, they paid for the hotel, they were so kind, it was so awesome to meet their team. And the best part, they gave me an RTX 5090. I got it in the machine sitting right next to me and I've been putting it to work. And I'm gonna show you the new DeepSeek R1 thinking model, the first thinking model I've ever ran locally, running on the 5090, but that's gonna come later in the video. Let me show you some of the highlights from CES because there was a lot of cool tech there. All right, so first, the little kid in me came out because they had monster farming equipment. I mean, this first dump truck, the wheels were bigger than me, and I'm pretty tall, but that's not the cool part. Everything that John Deere had was fully autonomous. They had full arrays of cameras, LiDAR, sensors, and they are really revolutionizing the farming industry with artificial intelligence. And of course, what's powering all of it? NVIDIA. Waymo also had a big presence there, and in general, autonomous vehicles were an entire gallery, an entire section of CES in itself. So there was a lot there, but actually seeing the Waymo in person was really cool. They have them in Los Angeles, where I'm from, but I'm kind of from the suburbs, so I don't see them ever. I just went up to San Francisco a few weeks ago and I saw them everywhere, so Waymo is doing really cool stuff. Of course, the robotics company Unitree was there, so we got to see some of their dog form factor robots, their humanoid robots, and there were a lot of robots in general. And then NVIDIA had a special editor's day where they invited just about 100, 200 people to basically give a preview of all the new tech coming out and specifically a lot about RTX 5090. But not only that, NVIDIA is launching a lot of open source stuff, which I really appreciate. They have a new section of their build program, so build.nvidia.com, where they have blue Blueprints. And these blueprints are essentially kind of like pre-built frameworks of applications that you as developers can extend on. So Crew AI is working with them. They have essentially what is kind of like a notebook LM version, but completely open source. They have a lot of cool stuff with these blueprints, so definitely check it out. And the best part is you could do anything you want. You can run them completely locally. You can run parts locally. You can plug into 11 labs for the voice. So with all of these blueprints, you can essentially build anything you want on top of them in any way you want to. And of course, power it locally if you want with an RTX AI PC. All right, so in this first example, they have a kind of like digital assistant that they built into Windows and you can ask them questions and they can actually perform actions for you on the computer. Check this out. Can you see the app that I have open right now? Yes, you're currently using Adobe Photoshop and it seems like you're working on an image titled nightmarket.psd. And then in this next video, they're showing off a new workflow using Comfy UI within Blender to essentially take Blender objects and then wrap them with completely AI generated skins. So it's really interesting. Take a look. So this image that you see here is similar to what we use in our keynote, obviously a little bit different, but the same kind of layout that we used in those images. But if I do something very simple, like I just take, I, ch I already changed the prompt to make it a little bit easier to show. Um, but I change the prompt by a few words. I click, I hide one of these assets. I click generate. It's still taking that kind of composition that you see here, but now it's using that text prompt, which says the canals of Venice, and uh, bringing it to this output image. Very useful if you know we get creative direction, we want to change just a little bit, like we just want to change the place where we're at, right? Now we can do that very easily with Gemini. And then for this next project, which was really, really cool, it's essentially like the Sims game, except all of the Sims are completely run by AI. So you remember that research paper, the human simulacra paper that I reviewed last year? Imagine that, except it has a fully kind of Sim-like 3D universe that these autonomous agents live in. And again, you can download it, you can run it yourself. Now, one of the most interesting things that they told us about the RTX 5090 is that it's using generative AI as part of the ray tracing process. I hope I'm getting this right, but that's how I understood it. So essentially, they are kind of traditionally rendering a frame once, and then the next two or three frames after that are generated predictively based on that original frame. And what that allows it to do is just be more efficient. So kind of interesting to think about that not every frame you're looking at in video games when you're using the RTX 5090 are actually part of the game engine itself, nuts. Now I've talked about it a lot on this channel. I truly believe the future of video games and software in general is going to be predictive. We are not going to have underlying game engines. We are going to have AI on top of a CRUD 
database. And that is what we're heading towards. This is kind of a middle step in my opinion. But I thought that was really cool, wanted to share it with you. All right, so as you can see, lots of cool stuff coming from NVIDIA and CES in general. But now let me show you the 5090 in action. All right, so I downloaded two versions of DeepSeek R1, again, running it using the RTX 5090. The RTX 5090 has 32 gigabytes of VRAM, which is kind of insane for a consumer card. Here we have the DeepSeek R1 Distil Llama 8B GGUF. So it's a eight billion parameter distillation llama version, and that is just under five gigabytes. Then we have a Quen 32 billion GGUF, and these are both Q4 quantization, and the 32 billion parameter model is just under 19 gigabytes. Both of them have full GPU offloading with this card. So let me show you it in action. So I'm gonna give it a prompt I know it's gonna think a long time about. Let me show you what that looks like. Write the game Tetris in Python. Now, remember, this is the 8 billion parameter llama distillation version. Watch how fast it's running, look at that. Now I've gotten up to 90 tokens per second on this version. Let's see what it comes out to right now. So as it did with the hosted version, it's basically thinking through how to build it before it builds it, and there it goes building it. And this is very, very fast for just running locally. All right, so there we go. 80 tokens per second, 2,200 tokens, 0.03 seconds to the first token. Really, really cool. And there it is if we wanted to try that out. Now, let me switch over to the larger version. So we have DeepSeek R1 Distill Quen 32B. Boom, let's load it up. I'm gonna give it the same prompt one more time and play. Now, obviously it's a little slower, but this is still really fast. This is a 32 billion parameter model that is essentially running faster than what people can read it at. So this is probably coming in at like 40, 50 tokens per second. And again, 32 billion parameter model really easily fits within the 32 gigs available to it in VRAM for the RTX 5090. So this is really what it's all about. This is what I've been championing for a long time, open source models that you can look inside, you could download them, you can run them locally. This is a thinking model that I can have running, powering any task that I want with full privacy and full security, all running locally, all powered by this RTX chip. So that's it. I'm very thankful to NVIDIA for inviting me to CES. Loved meeting their team. Thank you to them for partnering with me on this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.